Today's episode is brought to you by our friends at Cash App. Send, spend, save, and invest. No bank necessary. JJ, did you realize that you could invest or do anything you want in the crypto space on Cash App? Well, I realize that now, Tommy. Our friends at Cash App are changing the game. If you want to store your coins, you want to send some coins, you want to buy some coins, Cash App can do that as well. All right, let's welcome in our guest, Nikola Vucevic. Uh, Vuce, what's up, man? Not much. Just got to Miami, getting ready for second part of season. Yeah, you're coming off... uh, Arguably one of the weirdest all-star weekends uh, on record for the NBA. So in 2019, you were an all-star. It was in Charlotte. I've been to all-star weekend a couple times. I imagine that you did uh, some fit picks on your media availability. You probably went to some sponsored parties, maybe did a couple NBA events, then played in the all-star game, got to interact with fans and whatnot. How different was this year's all-star experience? I mean, honestly, uh, until you got to the game, it felt as if you were just on a regular road trip. Like you got to the hotel, you were in your room, like you would only get food delivered. And uh, that's like the only people you'd interact with would be like the people that deliver the food. That's it. And then, uh, I mean, once you got to the arena, you know, they had all the media there. They had a bunch of stuff set up. So it it felt a little more like an all-star, but. I mean, obviously, you know, once if you ever go to a regular one and you see how it is for three days and with all the people there, all the media, all the interaction, all the events, all the even, I mean, on the floor itself, I mean, you have all the people sitting courtside, you have like this, just so, so much going on at all times. And then you go here, it's like so quiet. Um, so it was just different. But I think in the end, the game itself, I think still felt like an all star and guys came to play and, you know, we put up a good show. I think that even the kill challenge, the dunk contest and three point was so fun. So I think overall for fans, it was, it was great, but I, you know, as a player, you know, you only get to do so many of them and, you know, to kind of have to do it this way, you know, you wish it wasn't this, it wasn't like that, but you know, we did have it. So I guess it, there's some positives and negatives. Did, did you prefer having everything in the same night? No, because I think when you when you have it in different nights, it makes it more special. You know, like I think people enjoy like Friday night because of the rookie sophomore game, and then you know Saturday night people really enjoy because you know it's the, the, like the three games. That, you know, you, a lot of people actually like that even more than the actual game. So when it's spread out like that, I feel like each event has its own like value, and people actually prefer it that way. When it's all put in one day, it's kind of like. Like for us, Flair, it was, it was like, all right, we got to the arena so early. And then like, okay, can we get like all that over with like a three-point challenge? Because I finished my skill challenge. So I just want to get over with second to the game. And then you're seeing at halftime waiting for a dunk contest. And so it's kind of all rushed a little bit. I mean, I know the NBA did the best they could in that. I mean, obviously, I think they did a great job being able to organize it so fast and so well. They know, I mean, when there were no issues. Everything was perfect. But it was just like... I think the three days are just perfect. It just makes it like a big, because then you have all the events around and everything. So I think it's just, that way it's like a very big spectacle. This way is more like, you know, we had it because, you know, we want to do it, but it wasn't as special. Uh, I know there are a lot of people in the NBA uh, who come to All-Star Weekend on Thursday or Friday and they have a good time and they go to the events Friday and Saturday night. And then they bounce on Sunday and they don't even go to the all-star game. I was guilty of that twice. Um, Are you, you know, in terms of the quick turnaround that we're all facing here, uh, you know, in terms of getting back into market on Tuesday for most teams, uh, practicing today for most teams. I know there's two games uh, tonight. We're recording this on Wednesday. Um, But basically for a lot of guys now, we've had five, maybe six days off. Uh, with one practice, and then you know, at least with the Pelicans, we're right into a back-to-back starting tomorrow. So I, I feel like there is a in talking to different people, there, there's a level of concern about our bodies, of course, but also just the quality of play coming out of All Star break that maybe we haven't seen before. Yeah, actually, I was, I was thinking that because like when it's regular, you have two or three days at least, you know, where you can actually practice practice and get back into some kind of rhythm, get, you know, the first wind out, you know, get up and down a little bit to where now it was like today, but even so, even for us, it's a back to back. So even, even though you want to practice hard and, you know, kind of get the whole couple of days of rest out of your system, you can go as hard because you still have to like save energy for tomorrow and then the next day. So 
it's uh, yeah it's gonna be interesting and especially like on the road you don't even have shoot arounds you know it's kind of just meet and then go to the game so even that you know usually shoot around you you know you can break a sweat get something some some of that out of your system so it's it's just different i mean but i guess you know this whole season has kind of been you have to adjust and go and figure it out and you know set up new routines and do things differently. Like, for example, I'm a big fan of shoot around. I love going in in the morning, getting shots up, uh, you know, break a sweat, shower. And then, like, I feel like I did something to where now on the road, I have to, like, improvise, like, riding the bike or walk on a treadmill for, you know, like, light jog or something. So it's just different. But, I mean, I don't know. It, it, but I think it's going to be interesting because a lot of teams are going to back to back. zone. you guys are, we are. I think I was talking to Luca, Dallas is too. So it, it's going to be interesting for sure. It's a lot of games in a very condensed period of time, for sure. I, I want to follow up just one one other All-Star related question I have. And I don't think I've ever asked an All-Star this, but in the last few years, they've uh, named captains of the team and they've drafted teams. And I I have never sat through and watched a draft of the All-Star teams, but I'm sure it's it's probably pretty good entertainment. As you're sitting there, though, as an all-star, how concerned are you that you're going to get picked last? And when your name's not picked last, how relieved are you? Like, you don't want to be Gobert and Donovan Mitchell. <laughs> so, actually, I, I didn't watch neither. Uh, first time I was an all-star, I uh, I didn't watch it because I think we had a game or something. And then uh, this time I was going to watch it, and then I totally forgot when I went on and see what team I was on, like the first question I asked some of the people that had watched it is like, Hey, would, was I picked last or not? Cause you don't, you don't, I mean, you, you don't want to be last. It's just like, it doesn't, it doesn't like feel good. And so this time actually I, I've improved cause last time I was second to last. And then this time I was, I think there were four people after me. So, you know, it's a pretty big jump. So I was, I was very happy with that. Congrats. This nothing sums up the 2021 NBA season more than uh, an all-star just forgetting to watch the draft. You know what I mean? Just like, uh, I, <laughs> I, I don't no really fucking care. Doing. I'm just trying to get through my day, to be honest. I have no idea you. what I was doing. I mean, man, I have two kids, and with, with them, it's a little, your day looks so different. I mean, you know, it's, it's so it's, uh, you know, once you put them to bed, it's like, I just want some me time. And I, I, I think the draft was about the time when I was putting my son down, and by the time I put him down and read a couple of stories, it was like, all right, let me just, uh, I totally forgot about it. I, I have a game question. What are you thinking when you're, you're seeing Dame and Steph in particular? And we've talked, we actually, we talked about this with Dame before on the show about him pulling from deep, but like there's him pulling from deep and then there's him, the two of them doing what they did during the game. Are you just sitting there? Like what's your initial thought when you see that? I mean, first, how unfair it is because, like, uh, you can't defend that. Like, it's just, I mean, unless you press the guy 94 feet, but then he's probably just going to go by you. Uh, and it's just like, I mean, to me, the, the thing that is like, and we can all shoot from half court, but, like, we might make one out of, you know, 10. And, like, most of them, we're going to be, like, way shorter, like, you know, slam the ball against the backboard or something. It's not going to be like a regular jumper. For them, it's just so easy. That's to me, that's crazy. That is just like a regular jumper. It's they don't the form doesn't look any different. It doesn't. I mean, I'm sure they have to put a little more strength into it, but it, you can't really tell. And so, I mean, they made like each made like two or three of those in the game. And I mean, honestly, in those moments, you're like a fan. You're just in awe. Like, wow, these guys would do it so easily. And uh, I mean, even look at like Steph's three point contest. I mean, he missed like the four first four or five shots and. It was like nothing. And, you know, Conley had like 28 or seven. He just went on and made a two, two uh, three point, like the green balls I had this year and then made all of his uh, two point balls. And then like, he just, and then he made a last shot to win it. It was just like, I don't know, he just makes it easy. It makes it look so easy. I mean, honestly, as a fan of the game, it's like beautiful to watch. You enjoy watching them shoot the ball that way. And it's just, I mean, it's just very special. I mean, that's why those guys are so great. I'm I'm partial, of course, because I'm uh, I'm a shooter myself, not on their level. But th those two guys are two of my favorite players ever at this point. If you ask me, like, who do I want to go? Who would I pay to go watch a basketball game? Pay to go watch play a basketball game? I would absolutely say Dame and Steph. KD would be there too. Maybe maybe Vooch, maybe Vooch, maybe Vooch at number four, but like 
<laughs> Dame and Steph to me, and and to to your point, it just looks so effortless. I asked Dame, we, we played them earlier this year, and he came out in the first quarter and he made like two thirty five footers contested on the move. And I'm like, yo, like, how do you do that? Like, is that a thing you practice? Is that your hips? Is your core? Whatever. And he just he broke it down for me. He went through his like his exercises he does he does. But the big thing was he says at the end of every workout, he actually practices those shots when he's the most tired. So he feels like when he's in a game and he's fresh, you know, he can make those shots. But to do what he does, both those guys is just it's ridiculous. And even the the, the shot he made against OKC, I mean, who takes that? Like who takes a step side, step, step back, whatever three. And it's like to your right hand, it's like usually it's harder for right handed shooters to like in a playoff series, like to win the series. And you just like so confidently take it to me. I mean, confidence, I think, has to have a huge part in it as well. But I mean, to me, that was, that was one of the most amazing shots I've seen in my life when I saw it. We had just lost to Toronto and we were watching the last few minutes of the game and he took that shot and I just like stood there and like staring at the TV and I was like, wait, what, what just happened? Like, this is like, this isn't like normal. This doesn't just happen like that. Well, I think too, it's, it's the confidence. It's the stones, right? You got to have some stones there, but both those guys to me are so clear headed when they play. We, I'm sure you've heard like the phrase, like play clutter free, but basketball, both those guys just play clutter-free basketball. Like you can't have any hesitancy in your brain to shoot a shot like that because your body won't respond. You need 100% of it. You need 100% of your body. So your, your brain has to be like, no, this is a good shot. It has to tell your body that. And those guys, have they've mastered that. It's, it's, it's really awesome. Uh, <clears throat> Vooch, we had, uh, we had Markel on earlier this season, and we talked a little bit about you. And how, I don't know that I want to call you underrated, but definitely under the radar. And I think for a lot of NBA fans, you don't generate the same buzz as players of your caliber. And I certainly don't mean that as a knock. You're a two-time All-Star. I was looking it up today. You're top 20 this year in win shares. You're top 15 in player efficiency rating. Um, why, why do you think given what you've accomplished so far in your career and done it for so long that you still fly a little bit under the radar? I, mean, I think there are a couple of reasons. Uh, I mean, first of all, my game isn't, you know, necessarily, you know, flashy highlight reel type of game. Uh, also, I think, you know, we haven't until Cliff came, you know, we hadn't made the playoffs in so long and we're you know, one of the worst teams each year in the NBA. So, you know, even though you play well and you do things, you know, like, well, you know, there's always kind of a knock, like, yeah, but they're losing. So does it, you know, does it really matter? And then we weren't on national TV, you know, and so for a lot of people, you know, they don't really follow Orlando Magic, they focus on the bigger teams with superstars. And we didn't have any superstars as well. So you add up all those things, you know, it was uh, for the fans that are not real fans are not like, you know, locked in to follow just every team all the time. They might not know maybe, but I mean, honestly, to me, uh, I think also that like the mainstream media, I mean, a lot of it today, they kind of, they go off the hype and they go off, you know, they follow like the, you know, the main guys and the main things. And you can just see it the way, like when you're on Twitter, when you're on things, you see what they put out there. But I mean, honestly, when I was younger, it bothered me because I always felt like I was just as good as some other guys that get more praise than me. But over the years, I figured out that, you know, People in the NBA do know how good I am and like players, coaches and stuff like that. And I realized that that's really what you know, matters to me. Then you see when I play, like the how to how to defend me, how to like approach games when they play against me, you know, talking to other coaches, other players. And then I think also what helped me is I think when I made my first All-Star, I finally kind of got that recognition uh, from them as well officially. So, so that kind of helped me put that behind me. So, I mean, it, it's... I mean, it is what it is. I think a lot of players throughout you know, history it happens to them, but I don't know, it is what it is. I don't. I used to like used to bother me now, not as much really. I don't. I don't try. I try to not pay attention to it as much. I mean, but it keeps coming up. Like especially this year has had a big year. People keep asking me about it, but other than that, I wouldn't think about it too much. It's 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 hard not to get discouraged at times by the casuals. You know, we, that's the that's the Twitter sure. name for the uh, for the fans who think they're NBA fans, but they're not willing to actually 
watch all the games and and read all the stats and and figure out the discourse and the narratives and and so if you're if you're a guy that the the mainstream media and I'm not knocking the media but you know I played with a bunch of guys that that have been anointed by the mainstream media and they get the attention and you know there's there's a curse that comes with that as well it's it's not all fun there's some expectations and there's always going to be backlash if you don't perform to a certain level I was actually going to say before you brought up the all star thing like you talk about just maturing and not being bothered as much. I would assume that along with being named an all-star and getting recognized, becoming a dad too changes your perspective a little bit. Big time, yeah. And 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 I'm wondering though, with that happening over the last few years, you know, becoming a dad and and, and being named to multiple all-stars, do you feel like you still have that chip, that edge? Does is there something that's still driving you? Because you continue to get better. So it's interesting. Well, actually, it's funny. Uh, the two times, like my my wife gave birth, like the beginning. Like, so the first son was in December. The second one was in October. Those two years, I made the All Star team. So I told her, "Hey, we might we might have to keep going, you know, for, for a couple more years." Uh, but uh, no, I mean, so it's funny, like. Before, I, I, I kind of used to use that as motivation, like, you know, kind of uh, show people that I belong among the top, among the best. But now that I've I've gotten there, like, you know, I've gotten to the All-Star twice, you know, we made the playoffs. Now that's what's really pushing me to keep going because I want to stay there, you know. So before it was more like I want to prove those people are well, now wrong. And now that I'm here, it's like, you know, like you feel that success, you feel like, you know, the good things happening to you, especially with, with us after all the losing and stuff, you, you want to stay there. You want to stay like at the top of your game. So to me, that it's just weird how it happened. Like, uh, like after for also, I just want to keep going, keep going. And, you know, last year I had an injury and then, you know, I was coming off a national team. So I didn't start as well. And then the playoffs in the bubble, I played really well. And that just, it was just lit a fire in me to come into this year and just continue at that level. Uh, I mean, no, I, I didn't know it was maybe going to be at this level, you know, but I just wanted to just stay there. And uh, I mean, just, it just that, that was really it for me, the thing that changed. And I think obviously also, you know, maturing over the years, you know, learning you know, my body, learning my mind, you know, getting over certain things, becoming a dad. I think all that has affected me to mature. And I think that like people always ask like me about my three point shooting, about things like that. I think all that itself for sure. I mean, obviously, you know, the threes and certain, but it's not like I've reinvented my game in a way. I mean, I still do most of the things I've done, always done. It's just, I think my mature, maturity level now is much higher and it's easier for me to like, you know, like read the game, even like the preparation for the game, all that has changed for me over the years. So that has affected me the most uh, to bring me to this level. It's that time of year again. Bubble teams are making their final push for a bid to the dance, while the top seeds are preparing for what they hope is a long run. And DraftKings is giving all customers a free shot at up to $100,000 in total prizes. All you have to do is head to the DraftKings app and make your picks. Yep, download the DraftKings app, head to their free-to-play pools page, and enter DraftKings' free $100,000 tournament seeding pool. Free-to-play pools are easy to play. All you have to do is make your picks for who you think will get a ticket into March's biggest tournament. If you have the most answers correct, you win. The bank is open. Tommy, I feel like there's a lot of sports going on right now. We also have golf's fifth major, which I know I'll be paying attention to this weekend. It's taking place in Florida where DraftKings will have even more money up for grabs. DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable, so you can deposit and withdraw your funds at your convenience. So download the DraftKings app now and use promo code JJ to get a free shot at a share of $100,000 in total prizes with DraftKings Tournament Seating Pool. That's promo code JJ to get a free shot at $100,000 in prizes only at DraftKings. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. The future of toileting has arrived. I repeat, the future of toileting has arrived. Okay, it's technically been around for centuries, but hideously expensive, costing thousands. Now the brand new Hello Tushy 3.0 modern bidet attachment is here to level the playing field. 
It's stylish, eco-friendly, easy to install, and affordable. It attaches to your existing toilet, requires no electricity or additional plumbing, and cuts toilet paper use by 80%. Do the math. The Hello Tushy bidet pays for itself in a few months. Because with Hello Tushy, you don't wipe at all. Just poop, spray, dry, and go. It's that simple. Plus, every Hello Tushy bidet attachment comes with a 60-day risk-free guarantee and a 12-month warranty. Wow, it's a no-brainer, JJ. Think about it. Use water to clean your body. Why wouldn't you do that to your butt? That's a great point, Tommy. So go to hellotushy.com slash three, that's T-H-R-E-E, to get 10% off plus free shipping. This is a special offer for our listeners, so don't miss out. Go to hellotushy.com slash three, for 10% off, that's hellotushy.com slash three, T-H-R-E-E. Do you, do you think, especially, I don't think it's happening now, you know, after two all-star bids, but especially earlier in your career, you snuck up on some people who might have, you know, underestimated you because maybe they just didn't follow you in college or in Philly or whatever it was, and you were coming up and all of a sudden, you know, to the point about not being on national TV, like even other players sort of didn't know what you were bringing to the table. I mean, I don't think maybe now as much. I think maybe like the maybe the first time year was an also like I think people were maybe a little surprised I was able to take that that step because you know I was I was like there was always like oh, I'm playing well, but can I really take the next step to really be that guy? I think so. Once I did that, maybe I think some people didn't expect it and they were surprised. But I think that now they know I, I can I can do that and be that consistently. So I think that, you know, not as much anymore now, but before, yeah, I think. I just I just want to go back to one thing. So, Tommy, if if Vooch plays like eight more years, he's going to retire with like six or seven kids. <laughs> that's basically that's basically what he just said. <laughs> so a full lineup. A full lineup of Vooches. Can't wait. Can't wait. A lot of people don't know this or haven't really like, don't know that we overlapped. So, so when uh, Orlando tr- traded Dwight, it was like a four or five team deal. I think it ended up being a, maybe a five team deal. There was like twelve or thirteen players involved, maybe four teams. It was four. It was Denver, yeah. Orlando, LA, and Philly. Philly. Four, yeah, yeah. Four. yeah. So, so you came. We played fifty odd some games together. Um, I really because you didn't play a lot your first year in Philly. I didn't know anything about you. It was evident within the first two weeks of the preseason. I was like, oh, this guy's awesome. I, I, I could see that right away. You were actually, other than Dwight, the first big man that I ever developed a two-man game with. It was it was first time that had happened. Uh, but that was year one of a rebuild. Coming off, you know, Multiple playoff appearances, a finals run in Orlando with Dwight, a conference finals run in Orlando with Dwight. I looked it up today. I had no idea. You've been there nine years. You've been there nine years. This is my like, idea. Yeah. I mean, did was there did you expect that it would still be nine years later and you and you wouldn't be on a contender there? So to go back, you said you uh like you developed a two man game with me, but for me when I got there and like um, like playing with you and like setting like those single screens for you and like nobody really cared about me on the court so it was all about like Jameer, you, Aaron Aflalo, Baby Davis, you know so people would always like blitz you or double team you and I was always wide open and I used to like average 10, 15 points or like your passes, Jameer's passes like just easy floaters, layups like it was it was pretty great to play with you know guys like that. It was you guys made my life easy. For most of that season with with Orlando, I was averaging like five assists a game. It was the only time in my career I had double digit assist games, and it was all pocket passes to you and, and Glenn Davis. But at first, uh, we we didn't until we got there. There were a couple of times where you did curse me out for not making the right read, but you know we figured <laughs> out. <laughs> but uh, I mean, to for the content, yeah, I mean. Yeah, it definitely took way, way longer than I, I, I thought it would. And uh, it, it was very difficult at times. I mean, obviously, we're not a contender uh, by any means now. But it's just, uh, I mean, to, to me, the thing was like, you know, I got there. It was it, it was a good situation for me because I was young. I needed to play, develop. So it was okay. And then, like, we actually made some, like, good, like, moves and good picks, like, in the next two, three years. 
And so you're like, okay, like this is just taking time because we're so young. And I think they were just, I think it's still a trend, but in the NBA where there was just like, yeah, let's just get rid of all veterans, just bring all young guys and like develop them. But I think that's just doesn't work that way as well. And I can speak from my own experience, like having you guys in Orlando, you were there for 15 games, but Jameer was there for two years. Um, you know, Hito was there for a little bit. Davey, Davis was there for two years. Like I was able to learn from you guys and like, you know, study how you guys do stuff and that's helped me. So I think when you don't have any veterans, like young guys are just lost. I mean, the NBA is like a grown man league. And so you come from college, you have no idea. Like it's, I mean, there's only a handful of players that figure it out early. Most players take time. So I think that's what happened to us. We're just thrown out there. It was all like, you know, we had a starting five, 24 years and under and just took forever. And then it didn't work out. Then they made like some big moves, big changes that didn't work out and then it's like all right so you've got to start over or not and it was just I mean we just could never figure it out and uh I mean I don't know it was just uh it was very difficult at times but then once Cliff came you know things changed and you know we made the playoffs and that was a step forward for us but yeah I definitely thought it was you know, gonna happen way sooner than it did I mean we were on the right path and it's kind of just all collapsed so it was it was it was tough at times I want to I wanna defend myself a little bit to what you just said about me because <clears throat> that year was a transition year for me. I had been on really good teams in Orlando and it became apparent throughout that season that we were trying to uh, earn a very high draft pick, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and so... <laughs> I, at times, let my frustration get the better of me. LaRon Prophet, by the way, who was our, one of our uh, coaches that year, um, had multiple talks with me about, he's like, listen, what you're saying to these guys, it's the right thing. It's just how you're saying it, man. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I didn't mind because, I mean, uh, like like playing um, like in Europe, growing up in Europe, like coaches are very hard and it's like a lot of curse and everything. And then in college, I had like coaches that were very, very direct with me. So I didn't mind it. I think maybe nowadays, if you did that, <laughs> things would be a little bit different for some guys, but I didn't mind it. I mean, I don't think anybody, I just I think there's also like, we respected you guys because you guys, you know, you guys went to the finals. You guys had like 50, 60 win season. You guys had, no deep playoff run so like we knew you guys had been there so we knew that you guys knew what it took so i think that all the young guys there they respected you and like we knew that like you, whatever you guys are saying to us i don't know maybe it's not the right message in the moment but i think that once we you know took a step back and kind of looked at it, it like all right he probably has a point and he's right about it so i don't think there was any i mean for me at least there were no hard feelings with it um the other thing you you just brought up about the veterans this is how, at least how it feels to me, and I would obviously love to see the numbers on this, and I could be way off base, but it feels like when I first got in the league, you had a few young guys, a few sort of middle-aged players, and then you had vets. You know, there was five or six vets on every team, and not like like guys that are 27 now are considered vets, and that's not a vet. Like Vets are the old heads, right? And now it seems like that has been completely reversed where there's a bunch of young guys, maybe a couple middle-aged players, and and then one vet, two vets. The vets need help. And the other thing, to your point, what you're, so much of what we learn in the NBA is through observation, right? Pattern recognition is the key to becoming a good team, uh, t you know, a team defender. You have to be able to recognize patterns. Um, and so if if you don't have veterans showing what winning habits are, it's really I, – I just think it's really hard to develop those habits on your own when you're 22 and you're surrounded by other 22-year-olds. No, I 100% agree, and I think you can see it you know, throughout the league. I mean, like I said, I mean, you get thrown into this league that it's completely different than everything, anything you have done before, whether you played in Europe, when you played in college, high school, whatever it was, it's just so different. And like, there's just no way, like, it's not like you practice for a week and you can learn habits and then you play, like you play every other 
if you like you have to learn on the go you're playing against the best players in the world like like you need someone that's been through it before to kind of lead you you know whether it is by just like you said observation or him talking to you or whatever it is that, that I think the veteran part is very very important in this league and uh for some reason teams are, are going to away from it but I think it's and also you know when you bring in a young guy and then everybody knows okay if you drafted a guy that's you know top whatever top five ten he you plan him to be the future but it doesn't mean you have to just give him everything right away certain cases okay but how many of those guys come up you know every so often so I think if you kind of make him earn it he will you know that would also build good habits for him to know that it's not just given. When something is given in life, you don't always re- appreciate it as much and you don't, you don't you kind of take it for granted. So I think that's also an important factor. But like you said, also the habits, if through losing, you're not going to learn a whole lot of good things and it's going to take years to break those. And so I think that's also what had happened with us in Orlando. We just had a lot of bad habits and we just didn't know because you don't, you don't know. It's just so different. So I think the veteran presence is very, very important, especially if it's a veteran that's been here, that, that's been successful for a long time because people respect him and respect his word. And I think that goes a long way. And for some reason, you know, teams don't, don't, don't necessarily like to do that anymore. You know that credit card. The one that you're afraid to look at to see what the balance is? Well, if you've been avoiding your debt, it's time to confront it. Upstart can help you face it and finally pay it all off. That's because Upstart is the fast and easy way to get a personal loan to pay off your debt all online. Whether it's paying off credit cards, consolidating high interest debt, or funding personal expenses, over half a million people have used Upstart to get a simple, fixed monthly payment. Upstart finds smarter rates with trusted partners because they assess more than just your credit score. With a five minute online rate check, you can see your rate upfront for loans from $1,000 to $50,000. And you can get approved the same day It can receive funds as fast as one business day. Find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash JJ. That's upstart.com slash JJ. Don't forget to use our URL to let them know we sent you. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit, income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. Go to upstart.com slash JJ. What What was your Philly experience like? Because in retrospect, it was a pretty interesting team. For me, it was a, I mean, in the moment, obviously it wasn't always a great experience because I was playing and not. And then, you know, for for that part, it wasn't good. But the other side of it, you know, after a couple of years, I realized, you know, certain things I was doing wrong, uh, you know, things that that I learned that year that helped me even today. So, but I mean, the, the team itself, I mean, it was, you know, it was a good team. We, we had actually, uh, we started off well and then we had a rough stretch and then we finished strong. And then we beat the Bulls actually when D Rose gets hurt and we, we play Boston. We actually lose game seven there, but we ended up having a really good season to finish. And then, you know, that summer they made a bunch of changes. And then uh, after that, it went to the whole process thing, but it was a, uh, for me, it was good because I, I played some and then I didn't and then I played some again and then it was on and off. But I think it was just a good learning experience for me to realize, hey, this isn't college anymore. Like you can't just come in and dominate because you're 6'11 and, you know, you over power people and just get in the paint, take two dribbles, shoot a hook shot. Like this is different. So I think that that year I realized fast like that the NBA is very, very different than, you know, college and where I was. The, the one other thing I wanted to, I wanted to ask about USC uh... – Quickly, just because you played with Demar, you played with Taj. Did you know at that point? Did you know how good Demar was? And was it? I'm always curious about this. We we talk about this with like the Duke guys and the Kentucky guys. When you have these college teams that have multiple All Star caliber players on it, do you look back a little bit on it and be like a little bit of like you know what could have been? So uh, yeah, we, when I first got to USC, I have. Like I didn't know much about like uh, like the good American players because it was you know I had did, done one year of high school in, in the U.S. but that was it. So I heard Demar was really good. Uh, so I obviously saw it once I uh, got to USC and I figured out who he was. And same for Taj. Uh, but my freshman year, I wasn't even close to like how I am now. Uh, like I remember first like 
open gym we played, I uh, like I couldn't do anything. I was so skinny. Like, I struggled so bad. Like I think they were all like asking themselves, like, why is this guy here? So that was very like for me. It was like, okay, this. So what I did after that was like for two months, I just lifted, 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 like with a strength coach, and then like uh, and also what helped me actually was my uh, grades from back home didn't all like get approved. So it took a little while. So I couldn't do any basketball activities with them. So that helped me work on just myself. And then when I got back, I think three or four weeks later, uh, I was actually a bigger, stronger. So I could actually play with them. And then they're like, oh, okay, so his guy is not as terrible as we thought. But uh, no, I mean, playing with with DeMar, uh, I mean, he actually knocked on me once really bad in practice. But you could just see how how good he was. And uh, I mean, I asked him once, like, you know, if he was going to stay. And he was like, yeah, I mean, I know I have to go. Like, this is, you know. Uh, the NBA is a dream so you understood it and the same with like Taj I think it was his junior year but yeah I mean if, if he had stayed and then we improved but I mean you know how it is you know guys you know once you have a chance to leave you, you have to take it you can't risk it but uh, for me it was just it was a one time but first time I kind of realized like okay like these guys are a whole other different level like I have to get there um, so but to me like in college freshman year I was like four and four maybe and then, like, I went to, like, 10 and 9 or something. And, and then I'd be, like, 17 and 10. But each year I made big jumps. Uh, uh, but, yeah, I mean, those guys, I mean, playing with against Dodge every day in practice, that helped me a lot because he was, I mean, he was much bigger than me. He was much better than me. So having to go against him was was, was very good for me. We actually, every time I see him, we, we talk about it. He, like, he was one of my vets in college. He helped me a lot with a bunch of stuff. All right, Booch, we appreciate the time, man. This was a lot of fun. Well, then. Appreciate it. I appreciate having me.